relation to the relational model, then the rule will have the exercise lab, uh, where we are going to create the MySQL database on the GCP. Then, in the, as I announced the last week, in the last class, we are going to have the extra the GCP lab. It's not the mandatory, this is optional, only to understand how the GCP is working. Okay, based on the GCP exercise lab document, we will cover the lab three, four, six, and seven. Three or four exercise lab, okay, but uh, it will be the September 22nd Friday, three to five o'clock at the dinner hall. Problem is this one is for all my teaching classes, including this operating system and the data mining. I do not know how many students are coming. The room is so big, so it's pretty much enough. But the problem is the access point. Uh, we have, the, there are two access points in, in that room. So each of them can cover the 30, 25 to 30 students. So which means if I have uh, more than the 50, 60 students, there might be the network delay. So it would be better if you have the uh, you know the data plan. So please use the data plan the, with the tethering. So for you, only for you, that will be the, I think the good for you and the other student also. Okay, today we are going, any question before we start? So today, the, please the, do not wait or the, do not the delay the practice of the GCP. I'm not going to accept any submission or uh, without using the GCP. We, you should and must, uh, even though you implement a very fancy, nice, everything with a local database, even I don't take a look at the we. I'm not going to grade your the, uh, project and the exercise. Lab. So only based on the GCP, okay, for your practice. So please, the, uh, the don't, do not expect any excuse at the end of the semester. Professor, we will not uh, make me fail. So don't expect such a thing. So if you do not use the GCP, it will be the zero mark or American. It will hurt your the final grade. Please try to use the, uh, the GCP and also the MySQL that we are going to create today. This is a definition summary, summary of the definition that we discussed the last time. So this is an informatum, this is the relational database terminology. Okay? So we discussed about the what is a relation that consists of the number of attributes, and each attribute is based on the domain in terms of a relational model. However, in our real the DBMS, we use the data type instead of the domain. Domain is not practical. And also each data is called the tuple, but in the DBMS it's called the row and so on. So uh, this is the, our the Def, uh, this is an example of the student relation, a group of tuple or a group of attributes. In case we have a missing data, we need to put the null. Otherwise, uh, it cannot be meant because we are going to use the, this schema to insert, to create a tuple. But if we do not have the office phone, it cannot be. So to address that one, we are using the null. Because of that, relational database model it's very, very strict. It's not flexible. Okay. So nowadays, due to the, that, the very strict the definition and or the model, so we consider like the uh, NoSQL database or other flexible database model. Okay. So uh, this uh, each tuple has a number of attributes. So we use the capital letter the to indicate the relation name, like the student, department. However, in general, in general, the database model uh, are not case sensitive. And even DBMS are not case sensitive. However, some of the DBMS sometimes ask the case, like the only capital letter or the small letter or the distinguish such a thing. However, in general, in database area, the uh, they are not case sensitive, except the data inside the quotation mark, okay? Only string. That makes sense, but the other are not. But if, for example, MySQL, you will realize that the MySQL sometimes is a case sensitive. But that is, the only, you can change the configuration option, but as a default, some of the, like the table name or database name are case sensitive. You need to get used to the, such a case. But the, most of the time, it's not. Okay, and uh, 
as we discussed the beginning of the semester, the, uh, today I'm going to use the slide because a little bit in a hurry to catch up the uh, today's slide. So, mother, any mother has the constraint rule or the mo model, okay? The rule, constraint, or condition like that. So there are different types of constraint uh, like this, but uh, we can define the three major constraints used in the relational model. First one is a key constraint, the entity integrity constraint, and referential integrity constraint. So you already know what is a key constraint, which means each and every each and every relation should have the key attribute. So key, what is a key? So we are going to start from the definition of key that we used in the ER model. In the ER model, key attribute, as long as you can identify, identify what the search or specify the entity data, that is a key attribute. Sometimes uh, the multiple many at key attribute, sometimes no, it is okay. However, relational model should have the key attribute in their the relation. Okay, so how many key? So we are going to define actually trying from the super key. Super key means it can be a set, a number of key, the attribute, set of attribute that identify the tuple. Okay, in relational model concept. So for example, so if we have the, this the data like the here, can you identify the this law using the name? Dick Davis. In this the relation is okay. However, in general, name may not be. Okay? So it, in general, so let's say there is a huge, so there's another Dick Davison, so it cannot be the key. The attribute. What about the SSN? Yes. 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 SSN is a unit. So let's consider the SSN is the quadrant, the key, the attribute they can identify. What about name and SSN? It can be yes. the key also. What about the SSN name and home phone? Yes. 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 So these the possible the set of keys are called as a super key. Okay. So, question, how many super key in this case? Number of subsets. Pretty much. <laughs> it's not infinite, but the, there are many, the super key. As long as you can identify the, each tuple, it is considered as the super key. It's kind of candidate. Then, we don't need the name, SSN, home phone number, address. It's a super key, but we don't need. Instead, we need only SSN, which is called minimal Super key in terms of the relation and model from super key, we can find the key. Okay? So, like the that many, but here we have SSN. Let me add one more, for example, name. And that name, this is a student UBID. This is a key, this is a minimal key, right? So then we have the two keys. Then, if you can find, so first question is, is it possible non-key relation? In other words, the relation or table without key, is it possible? In, according to the relational model definition, it is not possible. You should must have the key. That is the key constraint in relation model. Okay. Sometimes it can be multiple key. At that time, you need to select one of them as a primary. That is the reason it's called a primary key. How many primary key? One. Always one. No matter how many key you can find, always one. If this one is selected, then the other key is called candy candidate key. Almost the identical, same level. Okay? Like the instructor and TA are the same permission in on campus. Almost the same, but I'm teaching 
is her assistant. She is her assistant. Like that. Almost the same. The only difference is it's selected as the primary. And this is the candidate. Okay? So that is the reason the relation and model should have the one primary key. And the number of key, only one or more, is the key question. You, you said before that we, have, we can make the name as a, as a sober key. What about if... Name and SSN is the super key. Uh -huh. As long as you identify the data tuple, it will be considered super key. It's a kind of possibility. Then we need the minimum. Actually, minimum means it's a mathematical term. But I don't explain detail, but intuitively you understand what is a minimum. Okay? That is an SSN and UBID. So it's a minimal super key that is called a key in terms of relational model, that is a key constraint. And how many primary keys? We select the one of them as a primary key. The other will be secondary key or candidate key. Then, question. In this case, how can we select primary key? Both of them are unique. How can we select? Randomly? I, I think based on the organization of the company. Do you remember the very beginning of this class? I showed you the diagram. Functional analysis, the design and the database design process. So from time to time, we need to take a look at functional analysis. So if you realize that most of your that transaction or function access based on the social security number, you'd better select SSN as the primary. But if your system is the school management system, okay, school management system, then you'd better use that course registration. We don't need the, uh, the SSN instead, this one. But this database is for the payroll and tax related one. You better select. It depends on, as he answered, depends on the requirement. It's your job to select. Okay, so that is a primary key. That is a key constraint. Next one is, question, is this the unique one? Yes, yes. yes this is unique. What about the this? Are they unique or not? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Anyone? No? It's unique. What about this? Is it unique or not? Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 No? No. Yes. No? Or if I count this, how many cards? Five. 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 Three or five? Three. Five. Three. This is the three. I see. No one miss. Can you count the not existing thing? You cannot count. No is not NULM. No is not zero. No is nothing. Even you cannot count, you cannot consider. Okay? Even uniqueness is still unique because it's nothing. The only reason we assign the NULL is to follow relational model. Relational model should have the same attribute. Okay? That's the only reason. So, still it's a unique. But when we identify the data, only one, two, three can be identified using key. Right? So not, no way to be compared. Can I use the NU, the ID is not? No, no, no. There is no such operation. Because no, it doesn't exist there. It cannot be compared. It cannot be operated, processed. Okay? So we cannot use such a the operation. So it is still unique. So it satisfies with the key. However, there is no way to identify in case primary key value, key value is not to address that one, entity integrity constraint. Means the primary key should be 
not null. So the other, it can be null or not null, but the primary key should be automatically not null. Otherwise, no way to identify the data. Okay, because of that. So even before you take the discourse, you heard about primary keys, not null plus unique. You, some of you heard about such a definition. Primary key is it's a very well known definition of primary key, not null plus unique because of these two constraints. This is the unique, this is the not null or primary key. So because of that, from now on, the primary key is not null and unique. What about the secondary key or candidate key? Are they not null or not? It doesn't have to be. Because it's not primary key, it's just key. It's usually unique, but it doesn't have to be not null. Okay, it can be not null also. But it doesn't have to be. So that is the primary key and the candidate key or secondary key, the difference. So that is the second constraint of the relational model. Third one is referential integrity. The referential integrity. So this one check the one relation. This one check the one relation. However, this one, referential integrity, check the two relations. For example, This is an employee, this is a department. So we have the employee ID, EMP number, and name, and so on, and the DNO, where the employee is working. And there is another one, D number, and D name, manager, and so on. So we identify this is the primary key, this is the primary key by following the definition of the relational model. Then, when I insert the data, as long as it's satisfied with the uh, key and entity integrity constraint, we can insert the data, like the Lee and so on, to, and James and so on, like that. What about the DNO? It's not, there's no constraint, so I can put whatever I want. I remember the probably 10, or sometimes I cannot remember the, it's a zero, then, the, we have the department table, 10, as a HR, and so on. We have 20, and payroll, like that. There, are, there is no problem in terms of the key and entity integrity constraint. However, sometimes there are data, okay, which is not in here, okay, so which is not. The consistent. So we need to address that problem. To address that problem, whenever we populate, create the data of this one, the NO, check the D number in department. Okay? This time, this kind of constraint condition is called referential integrity const constraint. So this one is called referencing. Referencing. Okay, starting of the arrow. This one is referenced. Okay, arrow, destination of the arrow. This time, this should be what? Unique. Okay, otherwise, if there are two ten, you don't know which one is which. So always should be unique. Then you can identify. So from here to here, so you need to check the another constraint. This is called referential integrity constraint, or you probably heard about foreign key. This is the foreign key. So foreign key is the one of very, very important constraint, which are not used to many other the database model. Okay? So foreign key is good or bad, actually? It's good? Actually, it's so bad. The reason is that if they are combined together, it's HR is here. So for example, think about the, we have the student room. In the next room, parent room. So whenever I have a meeting as a family, like the advising, I need to check the, this room and the student number one. And who is the parent of student number one? I need to call both of them. 
open the two door. Instead, if they are in the same room, I can ask for just one time, right? So it's a very expensive operation, actually. Okay. Why? Then the why relational database model such a thing? Because of definition of a relation. Do you remember the definition of the relation? Set of tuples. They are related, same. The employee information only. Third, department information only. We separate. Later, we will discuss about this one in the normalization. If you do not know what is a normalization, don't worry. We will discuss later. However, because of this one, we can manage a very large data. However, due to such a definition, so we need to have the, such a foreign key constraint to keep the consistency to make the system consistent, not zero, okay? So this is the foreign key. Then, later in the SQL, when we talk about the SQL, when, you, uh, when we learn the SQL, it will be join operation, combined to join, okay? You heard about what is a join, okay? So join operation will be. Question, I never use the foreign key when I did my programming the assignment in other class. I use the SQL server, so I create the customer. There might be no problem. So is it okay? Yes, sir. So if we are using small size of database, like the how many tuple customer did you create? Maybe 10, 20? You can manually check even whether there is a cost employee that belongs to this one. Why in your programming language, Programming code, you can check it. However, what if you have the millions of employees? No way to check every time. So at the time, we need to use it. So database, in terms of a relational model, it should have foreign key constraint. Otherwise, your data is not consistent. It's kind of the garbage data will be, noise data will be created. That is the third the constraint. What if we do not use referential integrity? Then it will cause the anomaly. The, uh, some abnormal situation will be happen. Okay, so let's quickly go over. This is a key and the primary key that we discussed. So this is our goal to make like the each one has a primary. Should have, must have the, such a one primary key. Okay, at the <coughs> underline. In this case, it's connected underline. Okay, because it's a composite primary key, so it should be connected. Should be connected. Should be connected. Then one more thing is we need to create the foreign key relationship. Like that, finally we can have the such a. This is called relational schema diagram. That's our goal. Before to create the database on the MySQL, this is our goal of the database design. Pretty much the 90% will be done if you get the, this kind of relational schema diagram. Be careful when you draw the foreign key. Source and destination. Destination should be the unique, mostly primary key. Okay? In your exam, if you forget what the mistake, the direction, it's a deduction or a manipulate. I know you know, but uh, if you answer such a way, so Opposite or the missing the direction, it will be the uh, the deduction. Yes. Why we didn't have the same name? Uh, for example, the primary K here is S N, and in the other one E is S N. So why? So he is asking that this is S N, this is S N. It's a foreign key constraint. So it's a referential. So can we use the same name? Yes, we can do that. Problem? Confused. Right? So intentionally we differentiate the name ESSN. Okay? Otherwise, if we compare SSN of what? Works wrong. SSN of what? Employed. It will be confused. The world will see the such an example in the C code when we implement. Yes, another question? Oh, okay. So this is a, the relational schema diagram, our goal of the design. Okay? Then, so these three are the main constraints. Is there any other constraint? Like, the, for example, in the company, the employee 
your salary will not be higher than mine. That's the rule. That's the company. Is there any way to implement such a constraint? No. Sometimes user constraint. Okay. The domain specific con constraint. Okay. We have. So, that's first the way, first method to address such a problem in your coding. Okay. In your coding, you can <coughs> check. Whenever your salary is updated, check the whether to your advisor, supervisor salary. So if you hire them, the fire. <laughs> like that. In your coding, you can do that. However, if you have many, so too many employees, it will be hard. Well, so to address that one, the relational model has the trigger. Probably you heard about trigger one. All the version is called the assertion, mostly it's called the trigger. What is a trigger? Trigger. Right? Whenever something happens, it's a trigger in your gun. So you can trigger the bullet. So like that. It's called the ECI. Event. Condition and response. Not ECI, ECA. Action. ECA. This is called the ECA. So we whenever something happens, something means when your salary is updated or when the employee salary is inserted, that is the event. Check the condition. Whether your salary is less than supervisor's salary. If yes, do something, fire. Okay? So you can create a, such a user specific constraint using the trigger. Okay? So we will see the such an example in the MySQL later also. Okay. Also, another operation, the, when we talk about the model, model means data structure plus operation, method, behavior. So for the such a method, we can insert, delete, update. The modify is the update. Okay. Pretty much that's the end. So for your practice, very simple. Uh, to draw the relational schema diagram at your home, handwriting only, and uh, draw the diagram, the relational schema diagram. Okay, you don't have to edit, you don't have to the, use the visual or whatever, just the handwriting and draw the e, the schema, relational schema diagram, including foreign key. You can imagine the foreign key here, the foreign key. Then the next class bring in the classroom. Okay, like the EI diagram. Any question? The slide? <coughs> you set up? No, you can start. Any question? So relational schema diagram is another relational schema diagram. Relational model is so so far we start from the information. Okay? Inform we have the information, but information itself is not the good the format, not organized, <coughs> to manage in the database. So we need to organize such a data, but not at once. We start from the conceptual model, the ER model. Okay, using the ER model, collecting the similar data. Define the entity, define the relationship, and the attribute, and so on. Then, so we talk about, the, that's still far from DBMS software. So we need to get close. Using what? Relational schema, a relational database model. Among the many database models, we select a relational database model, RDB. Then, such a relational database model has the something rule, operation. Okay. Do you need this one? Yes. Oh, you can do it. So you don't have to bear in mind. What did I explain? I relate the I explained the schema ER model and the, then the we need to get close to the database DBMS system. At the time we talk about the relational database model today and the the last class. Okay, that has some constraint. Key constraint, the 
uh, entity integrity constraint and the foreign key and so on, user constraint. So e by following this, so we have the database model to represent such a database model, we can draw the relational schema diagram. Then finally, we can create the database using what? SQL. The next step is the how to use the SQL structured query language. Before that, there is a still missing part. We have a ER diagram, we have a relational schema diagram. We didn't discuss how to change. So next class, we will talk about how to convert ER model to the relational schema diagram. It's a very straightforward, just following the step. Okay, why don't you bring your the laptop and uh, uh, connect the Wi-Fi, go to the console, and uh, select the project that you create the last time. Or if, you, if you do not create the project yet, the, right now, why don't you create it? It doesn't take a time. Then select the project, then you, do, you don't have to print out the exor our exercise lab document. Instead, you can uh, open the PDF file and uh, see it together, okay? Especially when you copy and paste, be careful. Sometimes PDF file has some white character. White character means you cannot see it, but inside there is uh, something, the symbol or a new is an uh, invisible character. That will be the problem if we just copy and paste. I strongly suggest just type by following. And also today, you are going to create the MySQL instance on the Google side. Okay? So, this time. If you have a question, just raise your hand. So I will have you. So today we are going to be looking at connecting to my SQL database. So I believe we've all installed my MySQL on your laptop. So today I'm going to show you how to connect. Oh, did we do the creating the MySQL database? No. No, no. no. we need to start from the From creating. the beginning. Okay. Yeah. To set up your MySQL database on your GCP, you can use three different methods. You can either go through the Google Cloud SQL from the GCP console, or you could use the Google Cloud Launcher, or you could connect using MySQL on the Compute Engine. So these are the three basic ways you can connect. So but the, we, among three methods, we are going to use the first one. So Google actually the, give the menu. So if you click, click, click several times, it will automatically create a virtual machine computer. Then install the MySQL. Then the start, the engine, the MySQL instance. That is the first method. Otherwise, the second method means that there is a launcher service on Google Cloud, which means third party company already set up everything. Then by clicking the by you need sometimes you need to pay. Okay? Because you are following their the service. So that is the launcher. It's easy but some of them are not free. So but you don't know how it works. 